Uh, my name is Nate Beckew. Uh, and this is Alex Warish. We're both uh, from Allerton Park, which is a university in uh, East Central Illinois. We're just about uh, 25 miles west of uh, the University of Illinois campus in Champaign-Urbana. So Allerton is a 1,500-acre park and about 3,500 acres of uh, row crop ag land that was donated to the university by uh, a wealthy landowner. Um, he donated the property to the U of I in 1946 um, with the idea that the park would be supported by the agricultural land. And the park has uh, gardens that he created. He, he traveled and brought back all kinds of um, statues and, and ideas for gardens. So it's, it's uh, a small, maybe 150 acres of gardens and, and displays. His former residence is now a uh, conference center. So we do weddings and conferences. And then the, the rest of the 1,500 acres of natural areas we use for ecological research. Uh, we have tra a trail system that runs through a good portion of it. Um, and we have a deer management program. So what we're going to talk about today is our deer management program, a little bit of the research that's been done in the park uh, on the tree regeneration. And, um, and those are the main things. We'll talk about uh, the past of our deer program, and then I'm going to hand it over to Alex, and he's going to talk about uh, our deer program um, the way it is now and moving forward. We'll try and save questions for the, uh, the very end, but if you guys have something that's um, can't wait. I don't mind answering those questions uh, during the talk. All right, so a lot of people don't know that um, deer were extirpated uh, from Illinois and a lot of the Midwest states, the deer populations were gone or really, really low in the early 1900s. Um, our deer population was, was re, was started again from deer that were brought from up in uh, Wisconsin and Michigan in the 1930s. Uh, of course, deer adapted really well to the fragmented landscape and uh, the row crop agriculture. And so um, as the Allerton deer population grew, uh, hunting, hunting was only allowed on private property. So the park became the, the preserve for the deer. So um, we, one of the really great things about where we're located and affiliated with the university is we have access to uh, a lot of the researchers on campus and they have access to our park. So in uh, 1980, a guy named Charlie Nixon started a really big deer project. He ran it for these five years. He marked 286 deer and, and uh, radio tagged um, 96 deer. And then he, he followed their dispersal, their behavior, um, the, the way their family structure worked, um, birth rates, pregnancy rates, population trends, uh, survival, recruitment, all this stuff. You can see um, on that, that map there, this, the circle right there is, that's the, this is Pyatt County, the circle is Allerton Park. All the black dots represent deer that dispersed from Allerton to these different locations. This is, uh, what county is it, Grundy County? That's, a, that's um, probably 100 miles. So we were lucky that um, Charlie had all this data that he had collected uh, starting in 19. Uh, doing an aerial survey of the deer uh, within an area of Allerton and some of the surrounding areas. So this is, this is, uh, I'll use the pointer. So the green here is Allerton Park. The red is owned by the Illinois Department of Natural Resources. The purple is a uh, University of Illinois Extension. This is a 4-H uh, camp. The yellow is all our, um, our farms that support the park. Uh, this little teal is another conservation organization. And then all the other stuff is private land. The red outline is what we survey. So this was set up in 1980 as the survey area for when we count deer. So this is still the survey area we use today when we uh, manage our deer herd. 
So all the, all the numbers you will see uh, are based on this area. Um, and, and that's for when we count deer and for when we harvest deer. Here's some of the numbers. Um, 1980, the, um, the, the blue is going to be his aerial count. So he started those aerial counts in 1981. The red is going to be the harvest uh, that occurred within that area. So you can see that it, it, it was working pretty well. We were between you know, 100 and 200 deer for all these years. Around early 2000, they really started to climb. We're not exactly sure why, but uh, population, and this is true throughout uh, a lot of Illinois, a lot of the Midwest, that the deer population really exploded. But um, we got to this point, 2004, our deer count was uh, 735 deer. And so in 2004, uh, we decided that uh, we, we had to do something. This is some, uh, some, these are some of the gardens, um, some of the damage. These are uh, bushes that the deer were eating. You can see the browse line. This is, a, this is the estate where they have all the weddings and stuff. And here's the, this is a vine walk and you can see everything the deer could reach they were eating. Um, now we put up all these fences and we had, we had fences around everything to protect them from the deer. We, some, because we're university, there are a lot of, and our park is open to research, people had done different projects uh, looking at the, the different forests and, and uh, tree recruitment and things. So we were lucky that this study had been started in 1976, and um, it had found that over that 30-year uh, study, 76 to 2006, um, tree density had declined from 670. 619 stems per hectare to 447 stems per, per hectare. And over that same period, only one oak tree had survived beyond the seedling class in, in their study area. It's just a, a look at, uh, this is the typical uh, upland forest of Appleton. There's a lot of white oak. Um, and so you would, you would expect with this heavy of an oak forest that you'd get a little bit of regeneration. We also had um, a study that this this was started, the park was given, the property was given to the university and became a park in 1946. 1952, this was established. Um, th these are 50 meter by 50 meter grid. E each one of these blocks is a 50 meter by 50 meter block. Um, it sits right along uh, one of the main creeks in the park and the Sangamon River. and they, in 1952, they did a complete inventory of all trees over uh, three inches diameter in here. They also did subplots um, to look at seedling recruitment. They redid this in, uh, sometime in the 70s and then again in 1987 and 2005. And then um, Alex and I have, have redone a little bit of the work that we'll share with you too. So th this would be your 50 meter by 50 meter block in there. There's a five meter subplot which is looking at uh, trees that are over half a uh, half inch diameter. The, the really small one is looking at all trees under half an inch diameter. Okay and so within that uh, we, we don't have access to the really old data but we have the 87 data. Those 63 50 meter by 50 meter plots contained 10 oaks and 85 hickories. In 2005, that same, and, and these are the subplots. This is just the subplot uh, under two, data. Under two, and a half. under two and a half inches, yeah. So this isn't, we're not talking about any of the, the canopy trees or, or anything over three inches. These are all um, the seedling saplings. Uh, in 85 hickories, 2005, 37 oaks, four hickories. Um, we'll point out that this, in these 37 oaks are probably, we're all little seedling oaks. It was conducted four years after a fire. Okay, so some of those seedlings probably had, had lived for a little while there. We think that's why that number is actually a, a decent number. Um, 2017, eight oaks, 95 hickories. So we're seeing 
but we did this sampling the same year, so right after a fire. Um, so probably a lot of the really little trees uh, were top killed by that fire. But we we're happy to see a lot of hickory coming back. There's just, uh, we, we burn, um, we don't have a real set regime. We just, we burn when the conditions are right. Sometimes that's back to back years. Sometimes we don't find uh, a good conditions and you know, five or six years go by without getting a burn for these woods. Or, all right, this is uh, just a graphic look at some of that data. Um, it separates it too by the, uh, this is a bigger subplot. So these trees are all over half an inch, 0.6 inches to 2.4. Um, and these are the smaller trees. And this is 1987. The next slide will be 2005. There's 2005, you see the Hickories are almost non-existent at any level. The oaks are, there's a lot of oaks there, but um, they they did note uh, in this plot, they had two columns. One is for trees that are taller than a meter and trees that are shorter than a meter, and these were all shorter than a meter. And then the next one I'll show, 2017. So here we're still really low on the oaks, but the hickories are really making a, uh, seem to be making a comeback. And th this is just those sub, the subplots within those 65 or 63 uh, blocks. And remember, we, 2005 was the second, that was the second year we started a, a deer management program. And now 2017, we're uh, 13 years in. Uh, we, we did some deer exposure work when we first started. Um, 2005, these exposures were set up Oak and hickory, we used bur oak and uh, shell bark hickory were planted inside these exclosures. Um, after one year, the mortality outside was 71% and 39% uh, inside. The height was different too, so 59 uh, inside, 35 outside. We set up uh, a lot of these little exclosures. These are ones we, we made, they're just a meter by a meter, and we threw them down over patches of um, plants that we consider to be palatable deer. So this one would have been dropped on bloodroot. So here's the bloodroot that was stayed. So well, we, we would find a patch and we'd set these down right on the middle of the patch. So half would be left outside and half would be left inside. And then we went back and took pictures and made some stem counts. But something like bloodroot just, just did not survive unless the deer were uh, excluded from it. Um, we also uh, you'll see, you can see in some of these, uh, well, there's blood root that is outside. Here's one inside, so a lot bigger here. There's one here. Uh, these are pictures of the trees um, that were outside those exposures where they'd just been eaten off. Deer browse on trees usually is pretty rough looking like this um, versus if you see a rabbit or something, nip it off nice and sharp. Uh, deer kind of mangle them when they, when they rip them off. Uh, th this shows a couple little oak seedlings. This is what um, probably that high number of oaks that they found in 2005, a lot of those were probably these little guys that haven't survived, that, that just didn't survive the next fire. Okay, so we knew um, with all that damage to our natural areas and what we were going through in the gardens that we, ha we had to do something. Um, so 2004, we uh, started a, a deer hunting program. So when we first began hunting at the park, um, we have 14 miles of trails. So we have, I mean, constant runners, joggers, hikers um, on the trails at, I mean, any day, um, weather dependent. Um, so we put, we post all of these at all main entr entrances of uh, every trail, every parking lot. So no one's confused to understand what was happening. This was back in 2004. So your typical sign on each one would, would tell the average person what what the season season was when the it was archery archery only so archery hunters would be in that particular area at that time um, just basic rules saying that everything was the same you could still hike you could still run whatever stay on the trails all dogs must be leashed um, no bicycles um, and then we also um, added that in Illinois if you were to harass a hunter or interfere with the lawful taking of, a, of a, a game animal, it would be, it's a class B misdemeanor. So letting them know that you can't come out and wave your arms around, scare deer off, and, and, part to, or, uh, 
and uh, not let a, a hunter take a, a lawful animal. So, so it was all posted so everyone understood. And uh, if anyone had any questions, they could they could give us a call and we could talk to them about any questions. So when it first started out um, to hunt at Allerton, um, it was a lottery system um, for a few years. Um, and then we went to a 40-year volunteer hour um, basis. I think it was about 60, 60 hunters total. Um, you had to earn a buck, so you had to shoot an antler with deer before you could take a, uh, a buck with antlers. Um, and uh, in the park, it was a one buck limit. So once you got your buck, you could still kill those, but then you were limited, limited to that one buck. Um, antler restrictions, um, 2004 when we began to 2012, um, there were no restrictions on antler size. Um, so anything in the state of Illinois above three inches is con considered a, an antler deer. Um, um, so there were no restrictions on that. But then in 2013, we uh, implied uh, a minimum of four points on one side and then that the width of the rack had to be at or outside the ears to be legal in Allerton Park. So here's the rest of the graph um, with the fly counts in blue. Um, the total area harvest, um, that's everything Allerton and, and outside Allerton in the red. And then uh, green is actually the uh, Allerton only harvest. So you can see the deer counts were still really high up above uh, 600 from 2000 to 2005. Um, and then you can see in green where 2004 was our first year for hunting. You could tell um, just the difference in pressure on how the number of deer were killed. Um, and then once that, once that pressure was put onto the Allerton Park and deer were killed, they either dispersed or uh, were harvested. So the trend kind of goes down to our, um, our manageable level where we want to be at, which is 150 to 250 deer um, in, that, in that fly area. So you can see the, and then you can see the blue hasn't been um, continuous throughout the past years. Um, and we can, we talk about that later, um, but to, to do a flyover, to do a count in that whole area, um, first we have to have a helicopter and that's been tough to get um, the past couple years. And then we also need a good three to four inches of, of heavy snow for a couple of days to get that helicopter in and to be able to do that count. Um, it's a lot easier to do it in the snow just because they, they stand out and uh, are easy to count. So there's a little bit touching on that. Um, it's just a picture on the bottom right of, of what you would, you would see in the timber. Um, not very thick timber, but, but it's still um, easy to see. Um, and then if, if you were to find a big group of of deer in, in a thicker patch of woods, um, the helicopter um, could actually kind of spook them out into open open fields so we could get a, uh, a more accurate count. So when we would do a uh, helicopter count, there would be multiple people counting. They would kind of combine of, of, of say, how many deer did you have right in that patch? If he had six and seven and six, then you would know that it was probably six and the guy can't count or, uh, or a deer was moving was moving and uh, double counted a single deer. So, and then we also tried um, FLIR, which is um, you can do it at night um, and it'll show you uh, the difference in heat. Um, you can tell that, I don't know, are those deer or were those cows? Okay, deer. Um, so no snow is needed for that, which was nice. Um, you can do it at night um, and then it would actually video um, the whole screen as you went on the, on the fly zone so you could come back and you could play it on a big screen and, and do your counts then to, to make sure your, your counts were accurate. Um, and the size-wise, it would pick up it would pick up most anything. It would pick up cows and deer, but then also small small uh, game birds and 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 uh, coyotes and uh, raccoons and possums, anything you'll have wandering around. So you're able to depict the difference and, and count deer only. So how, how Allerton and the area outside Allerton uh, benefits from this hunting program. So when we first started, um, we, we wanted to get as much research-based um, projects out there um, to where we could, we could take samples, um, OBEX, which is the brain stem, lymph nodes, blood, ticks, um, tip of the tongue, and then a tooth for aging. Um, and all of that kind of went to different parts of the university that that research projects and, and grad student projects um, could do anything they, they wanted. Um, and then with, with that, we would also be testing for chronic wasting disease um, and then a couple others, EHD, Lyme disease, uh, blue tongue, and uh, a couple others. So 
it was a, a wide variety of, of things we could we could hit with one stone um, by doing this. So we also took a look at uh, the deer vehicle accidents within within Allerton Park and uh, within that area. So to see the difference of of how it used to be with over 700 deer in that area, lots of car related accidents with deer, um, and how it's changed over time to where um, that dense population that used to be in Allerton Park, we would have high amounts of, of collisions each year, um, and how it's changed and how those deer have dispersed and those accidents have, have uh, faded away from Allerton Park. So here, the, the data goes back to 1990, um, number, of, number of accidents on the side, and uh, the uh, Pike County, so our county that the park is in, um, and then the total county in red showing um, that, higher, that higher number. And then in the blue is the Allerton. So it, from 97 to, to 2004 or 5 to when Allerton started hunting, uh, we started hunting in Allerton. You could tell that deer pop population was high outside in the whole county. The accidents were high and then how they've kind of petered off and fluctuated throughout throughout the years. So a, a big uh, portion of our uh, volunteer hours at uh, Allerton Park come from our hunters, hunters. So in the beginning, they did 40 hours of community service at the park, um, ranging from firewood, painting, um, invasive species control, um, setting up for those big weddings and uh, conferences, um, helping out with our big summer camp we put on in the natural areas um, in the summer, helping with day camps and uh, stuff like that. Um, the guy on the left, he's been part of the Allerton um, hunting program for as long as, as it's uh, been around. Um, always a good guy, good guy to know. He'll help you do anything. Um, he kind of took a break from hunting, and then one of our other hunters at the park kind of got him back into it and got him enthused about it. And uh, actually, the, the year here, he started hunting again. He killed two bucks in the same year, so on his property in, in Allerton. Another example of, of volunteer, we have some hunters spread out in, in this picture with um, another volunteer group that, that the natural areas um, gets to have. Um, this is one of our prairie plantings um, where we got some, some really nice, high-quality plants that we, we would do these big circle patches out in the prairie to uh, increase the diversity and, uh, of the prairie. We've got that prairie right there is about 50, 55 acres. Storm cleanup, um, lots of, uh, most of the roads are, are heavily timbered on both sides, so we always have big wind storms and trees that get knocked down, as well as trails and stuff that uh, they help us keep maintained and uh, looking nice. Just a, one of the pictures from uh, the farm where we actually used to grow, um, had a uh, full-time person that would grow vegetables and, and everything else for, um, for the farm or for the mansion. Um, this is just a picture of one of our female hunters that's been with us since the start, um, helping put up a fence to keep deer out of uh, that garden area. And uh, in the back is our uh, one of our wood burning um, stoves or units that uh, we, we help uh, heat most of the park um, solely by uh, volunteers cutting wood and uh, from the trees that fall in Allerton. It's just another project of a, uh, a boardwalk that leads from one of our visitor centers out to uh, the uh, end of the Allerton Mansion Pond, um, something that, that uh, is still there. I think the next picture shows it's still there and what it looks out into the, uh, into the corner of uh, the Mansion Pond. So something that our, volunteer, our guests can, can enjoy for years to come. Just some other pictures of volunteer work. Um, Painting, painting sheds, painting uh, pieces of the garden, um, keeping things look nice. We'll show you the one of the gardens that uh, is most popular for, for weddings. Um, so they help set up and take down and uh, anything else we need. Firewood, so I touched on that. Most of our buildings, um, minus the big mansion, are all heated by, by uh, those wood burners. So we, we cut a lot of, of hedge and um, unwanted species and turn that into uh, fuel that we can we can uh, keep those wood burners going and uh, have a very low um, energy bill for, for heating that, the whole part. So we kind of we kind of tallied up the total hunters that we've had over the last since 2004 when we started hunting 
And uh, this is a picture, just a, a good group of guys um, back when we first started of, of clearing some uh, privet and honeysuckle out of out of our uh, one of the pieces of woods that's that's by the mansion to uh, make it look nice and, and keep it clean. Um, so, any guesses on over the 10, 10 years of volunteer requirement? How many hours have been put towards um, the Allerton Allerton Park? What's your guess? Maybe a thousand. A thousand? A thousand hours? Any more? I'll Ten. say I'll say higher. Ten thousand. Close. Thirteen. I think you can go to the next slide. Yeah, over thirteen thousand volunteer hours. So that's it's a huge, huge impact for the park. Um, it would be it would be a, a lot of work um, that uh, we would have to do to to match what what they've done over the years and helping us out with invasive species and uh, things like that and setting up for weddings, parking cars during our big uh, concerts, and uh, all of that stuff. So it's a, it's a big help for Allerton in the area. Um, keeping out and look nice and and moving uh, pretty with pretty good flow. So our future of the herd, um, like I said, we want to keep that population between 150 to 250. Um, that's what we feel is a good a good number in that area um, to where we can manage the natural areas and have those um, spring flowers not be demolished by deer every year, and uh, the hikers and and uh, joggers can enjoy the trails and see all the nice stuff in the spring and in that fall color um, from for every year um, it's it's changed big time um, in the spring it's it's pretty it's a very pretty sight around the park seeing all the uh, the native flowers that, that pop up um, so that in mind um, keeping the hunters at Allerton Park happy um, keeping them around keeping them there to to help with the park doing their volunteer hours so over the years um, we were able to harvest some really nice deer um, and we want to keep it keep it that way because a lot of guys like to take a nice a nice a nice buck, and uh, so we've kept that in mind, and uh, we'll talk about that a little bit in a couple slides. One of the biggest biggest changes we've seen um, from the start of the the hunt program, um, the antlerless doe, the antlerless deer um, counted as as your doe to earn that buck. So you could kill a button buck, you could kill um, a buck with with less than three inches of antler. And that would count as your doe, so then they could they could look for that, that nice buck or whatever um, buck that they wanted to take home and be happy with. I think the next slide we'll talk more about that. So defined by IDNR is that an antlerless deer, if you had an antlerless tag, you can kill a doe, um, or you can harvest um, a male with antlers that are three inches long or shorter. So just a fact: in, in 2016, archery alone. Antlerless deer harvested was around 28,000. Um, so that's not just the does. That's that's a mix between those those smaller bucks, yearlings, and uh, and females. So one of the the biggest things we want to strive on on the, in the future um, is is that herd management and and keeping the, the hunters happy and on building that that herd to have some nicer deer and some quality bucks. Um, so this is a good example of of a transition over the years. This was a deer that was that lived on a big estate in New York that uh, a photographer was able to follow throughout his lifetime and uh, and show you the what what antler growth can do over um, between that two and a half to four and a half. So the deer on the left is, is two and a half years of age um, and then one year at three and a half you can see he's he's starting to put on that that mass and some some time length. And then at four and a half on the next slide, you can you can really tell that jump from from three and a half to four and a half, which is really one of the things we've we want to strive on in keeping those hunters happy and and uh, and kind of passing those younger deer so that all of the hunters we have about 30 to 35 um, per year that are that are able to hunt out and that do their hours and uh, we want to keep them happy and and have deer like that out there that, that they know are out there and will continue to come and we can continue that volunteer base. So one of the, the biggest changes throughout the park, um, Nate touched on the before pictures um, you see in the middle and uh, on the left. Um, lots of small trees and shrubs that were planted were just rubbed by the bucks during during the early season and uh, we could never, never keep anything um, from growing 
right without having to have a big bulky cage around it. And uh, now it's it's not a big deal because those numbers are, are down. And uh, when you walk when you walk around, you see that more diverse and abundant wildflowers and, and forest plants that are that are really thriving. You can see in the far right picture just a very diverse um, uh, species that that grow uh, in most of our areas. Really nice in the spring. This is one of our really famous hillsides in the park that a lot of people um, come out and take pictures um, with the Virginia bluebells. Blue um, one of our trails that is is pretty consistent every every year with with uh, with bluebells and, and other native flowers. Um, so keeping that the deer population to that manageable level will in turn get us this and keep it nice throughout the years to come. This is just one of the the, the peony gar garden in the park. Um, it's it's blocked off by the fences um, back before they didn't have any of the fences. Nothing like this could could ever grow it out, and it would be it would be demolished. Um, so this is one of our big flower gardens that, that people come and enjoy, and uh, and we have that to show them, and, and don't have any deer damage whatsoever. And these are just some really nice deer over the years um, from that 2004 until now, um, and just keeping those those deer there to have something to come to and do your hours and uh, look forward to. Slowly go through those and you guys can see what Allerton has produced over the years. And most of these guys that, that are in the pictures, they're, they're people that have been there since the start, have uh, made a big, in oh. a big impact on the park and, uh, and made it to what it is today. When we first started the, uh, the Allerton program, we uh, we had week week lotteries. So you would you would pull a week, and that's that's the time you would get you'd get that that week to hunt and nothing else because it was such a a lot of people wanted to hunt Allerton because there are a lot of, of good deer and uh, people traveled from a good distance to uh, to come hunt at Allerton, and uh, so those first was it two years that it was first two years that uh, you would have that week to hunt and then uh, you were done. And then since then, it's been changed to where we, we get a select few. Um, it's around 30 to 35 that uh, we keep every year. Um, we like to take new people in as well. Um, a lot of people that are getting to the age that they they can't hunt or don't want to hunt anymore that will trickle in some some younger guys or guys that have been waiting for, for a few years to get on the, the Allerton hunt, hunt uh, program to do their hours and then to be able to hunt at uh, to Allerton, so so overall, um, we're going to continue to do those uh, those flyovers to uh, keep that number in check to see what we have. Um, we're looking forward to the next count because it hasn't been done in in three to four years, um, just because of the the helicopter use and then uh, the amount of snow. Usually, our snows don't last very long around around Central Illinois um, to get that that timing right to get the helicopter there and that snow there. Um, so. A couple other things that we monitor. Um, we continue to, to look at that deer vehicle accident um, in the park and then the, the area around it um, to, to see that it's still keeping low and, and not and not rising. Um, and then observation logs. Um, all of our hunters, if they hunt more than 15 times, they can turn in an, an observation log to where it's detailed day to day where they hunted in the park and what what do they saw. It's females, males and then uh, bucks and how many points. So we can kind of get an idea of age structure and uh, numbers that they're seeing if it's, if it's a good year, bad year. Um, so we can change our, our uh, regulations on maybe number of deer you can take per year if it's, if it's getting to that, that level where it's, it's diminishing and, and we want to keep uh, the deer around uh, for those hunters. Um, and we look at the, the amount of times that they, they go out and then the class structure is, is in there as well. And, Monitoring the wildflower abundance as well, like the picture in the um, a couple slides ago with with the bluebells along the hillside, um, keeping those in check, um, walking around and, and just taking in what's if anything's changing, if it's it's getting better or worse, and uh, and 
making that depend on, on what we do with the, uh, the hunt program. And then as well as the hardwood regeneration. So we'll go back to those um, 63 plots each year, every other year, and, uh, and do a count and just see that change um, from when the, the deer weren't there to where the deer were over 700 to where it's now between that 150 to 250. I think that is it. I think we've got time for questions. So, yeah, I think I think the question is that uh, a lot of times these management programs are are done by like a contractor with a, a high powered rifle. Is that where you're getting at? And and we're run by the state. So, um, because because Allerton is uh, University of Illinois property uh, we knew we had to do something we wanted we wanted um, we wanted to offer a hunting program a lot of our uh, a lot of the people who had our stakeholders in the park would preferred that we contracted out a sharpshooter and that would be somebody who would come in at night when the park was closed and and shoot the deer there were other people that wanted to see um, um, you know like uh, sterilization or deer, you know, uh, birth control, stuff like that. And what a lot of people don't realize is, um, one, for the, the, the birth control and sterilization, is those are really expensive, they're not proven to work, and most of the drugs aren't approved. Um, so that, we shot that down pretty quickly. Um, in most states, if you want to do a sharpshooting program, uh, you, you have to get approval from your state's conservation department or Department of Natural Resources because they um, they regulate the harvest of those those game animals. So they're trying to sell hunting licenses to deer hunters, um, and so they, they don't. They basically told us we're not going to allow you to sharpshoot unless we see that you have made a proven attempt with recreational hunting. So early on in, in the first two years, we did um, we had a hunting program, and then at the end of the year, to meet our goals, they would allow us to do some sharpshooting. So we did have a contractor that came and helped us meet our goals those first couple of years to really put that first reduction of, of the deer numbers down. Yeah. What stage of the rut is this in? The sharpshooting portion? We, 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 our, our hunting program is open for the whole season now. So October 1, January 15th, usually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you ever consider having antlerless for at least a few years? Because that's how we control deer most. And it's also how we improve the bucks. We, we, um, like Alex said, we always have had the, uh, earn a buck or the doe first. Um, right now, the deer hunters can kill as they can kill does. They can they can only harvest one antler buck, but they can kill multiple females. We we did have a couple years where we allowed shotgun hunting during the shotgun season, but it was a antlerless only for uh, antlerless only hunt. And our sharpshooting was all antlerless only. I know that 
yeah, that that would definitely work. We we, um, we we do some protecting of our trees on a small scale, but uh, not not you know we can't do that across the whole our whole property. How big is that whole management team is in your city or township to the initial size that you have? Like I, I think it's eleven square miles. I heard the first question is, have we found CWD? And the answer is no, not in Pike County. Um, the Livingston, or uh, yeah, Livingston County is uh, two tiers above us, county-wise. There's one uh, row of counties north of us, and then the next kind of row of counties is a Livingston County. They found a few in Livingston County. So it's a couple counties away. And then I didn't hear your next two. Biggest deer, biggest deer kill. The biggest deer was, I think, had a, a score of like two, two or three inches, two hundred three inches. Non typical. I had eighteen points. Non typical. Yeah. Um, coyotes. We don't. We don't know what the population is. We have quite. We don't do any. The only wildlife we manage within the park is deer. Um, a lot of our neighbors including the, the farms that are part of the university, all uh, hunt coyotes. Um, depends, if you ask me, I'd probably tell you I don't think they're a big problem. If you ask some, most of our deer hunters, they would tell you they're a huge problem. So um, we, we have never considered managing coyotes within the park. We feel like we get enough of that outside. Do you allow your aerial? No, we don't. It, it depends. Some deer and turkey, or I mean turkey and coyotes are Two that one year you'll fly and we'll see, you know, 20 turkey and eight coyotes, and then the next year we might see one coyote and and no turkey. So those numbers fluctuate a lot, but I think that the coyotes are pretty good at, at hiding when they hear that coming. Uh, here. Uh, for the stands and everything for the hunters, are they drawing for like a set stand, a permanent type stand, or or is it basically? Free for all. Yeah. So, so his question was, do they, do they have a specific area? The hunters do they have a specific area they go to or have to go to? When it first started, they, they drew in. They had a specific zone. We have it divided into uh, colors at the park to where there's like seven zones, um, and they're all colored. Uh, the trails kind of wrap around them, and there's a zone in the middle, and then the outside of that trail. Uh, so it started out. Yeah, they were confined to an area. Now it's it's 30 to 35 hunters where it's it's a free for all. There's a, there's still a number of restriction on per zone. Say so this this zone can only hold five guys. You can't pile in ten guys just because it's a really good zone. So they we never have any problems with people wanting to all hunt one zone. It, it's pretty spread out. And the typical the typical day you could have two guys hunting and then on the weekend maybe five to six. So it's not it's not a, a huge uh, problem. They tend to, they tend to, if they see one guy hunting here, they, they'll spread out and end up going somewhere else. Do you harvest some of your mature trees? We, we don't harvest any trees from the park. We do, um, well, I'll take that back. We harvest um, trees when, when our management would require it. So um, our uh, horticulture and the uh, gardens crew just took out a bunch of trees. Most of it goes to firewood. Um, if if there if we feel like the trees that are, are you know good quality that could be used, we have a, a mill that we work with, and um, we just trade work with that mill. And and on the tree stands, we let those guys put up. They can each have two tree stands uh, within the park, and then use a climbing stand too. So they have three options. That first year, it, it was set up where we had like eight different zones, uh, 12 different weeks, and like 25 hunters each week. So the multiplier of that was really high with the number of people that came into the park. 
but now we're at a point where since they all they volunteer, um, we've got about 30 guys, and I would say over the last seven or eight years, there's maybe been 60 guys that have been part of the program, and but so there's about 15 or 20 guys who have been with us for 10 or 12 years, and um, it, one thing it did is we don't have the problem. We don't have problems with. Um, we haven't had any issues with uh, you know guys being doing stupid stuff uh, like we used to when we let people come in a week at a time. Yeah. Was the purpose of this program to get rid of the deer, grow big bucks, or try to grow trees or both? Or? So the purpose of the program is always first and foremost bad for the health of the forest. Uh, to reduce the deer number to what we felt like was sustainable. We never wanted to get rid of them completely. Um, we recognized the importance of having deer in the park. Um, but it was to bring that number really as low as, as we felt like. Uh, when we started, we didn't know what that number would be. And we still aren't 100% set. But the goal was to bring it down and watch and hopefully see some recovery in, in trees and, and uh, herbaceous plants. Um, but the goals are still, that's still our primary goal. But secondarily, we're trying to keep the, the hunters that are with us and do good volunteer work but, um, and cause no trouble, keep them happy while still um, maintaining our goal, our target population. So we want, we, some of these rules are put in not only to keep those guys happy and, and um, keep them coming back. Um, that's a good question because in the, the question was, is there intensive hunting outside of the park? Um, and the answer to that is when we, before we started our hunting program, yes, there's very intensive hunting outside the park, all private property. Um, in the 15 years that we've had the program, a lot of those properties have been either purchased or leased by um, uh, bigger organizations and the pressure outside of the park has gone way down. And um, outside of the park, almost no uh, female deer are harvested. It's almost all uh, antler deer. Uh, and so there actually was a master's student who just did a project looking at that flip from the intensive hunting outside the park with no hunting inside and then over 10 years, it switched from intensive hunting inside the park and very little pressure outside of the park. The question is, are those, that high number of oaks that we saw oh, in 2017? Um, in 2017, we saw almost no oaks in, in our subplot. Um, they stopped fire. Yeah, we, we had just had the fire. We had just burned. Um, so Alex and I talked about going back out next year do it again to see what we got as far as uh, things that have been top killed but re-sprouted. So we would like to see more oaks. Yeah. And I think they're there. How did you come up with the number of hundred to allow one to stop? And has that changed since the population of deer changed? Initially we used a number that the DNR uses based on that. It's an acreage per Hunter. So I think they, for archery hunting, they, they recommended uh, 23 acres per hunter or something like that <clears throat> initially. And then um, we kept it like that uh, for quite a while. But then, then we started to, we were looking at what we could, um, how many deer we needed to kill to stay at that uh, 150 to 250 deer. And so we reduced it down to 30. Um, so now we have 30. There's more, way more room than they need, um, but uh, that's where we're at now. And it floats a little bit between 25 and 40 probably.